We're here at Black Rock Neurotech's headquarters in Salt Lake City, Utah. They flew us out here to give us and all of you an exclusive behind the scenes look at their incredible technology. Their devices have been implanted in dozens of people since the early 2000s and have been a part of many of the most pioneering research projects in the BCI field, including brain controlled neuroprosthetics, sensory restoration, encoding thought into speech, and many, many advanced brain computer interface functions like sending emails or playing video games. Oh, by the way, I should mention that this is a sponsored video and I do ongoing consulting work for BlackRock. All right, let's head inside. All right. The story of BlackRock Neurotech really has been the story of the brain computer interface industry more broadly, at least for implantable devices. BlackRock's flagship device, the Utah Array, has been at the core of many of the greatest advancements in the field to date. It's been used to control prosthetics and even, in some cases, send feedback back to the brain to feel through those prosthetics. It's been used to control advanced computer applications like making digital art and playing video games and has restored patients ability to communicate and speak through a computer, all just through thought. It all started back in 1989 when Richard A. Norman at the University of Utah filed a patent for the Utah Array. The Utah Array was game changing as it allowed neuroscientists to reliably collect neural signals in three dimensions for the first time. By the late 90s, neuroscientists had realized the Utah Array's potential as a BCI device and were already using it in primates to move a cursor. This development was a watershed moment that proved that this type of device was possible. Primate research continued to prove increasingly better capability and safety. In 2004, another milestone was achieved. As a volunteer in the newly formed BrainGate project, which would go on to be one of the leading BCI developers, Matt Nagel became the first person to have a Utah Array BCI implant. BrainGate, which is still around today, has produced innovation after innovation with the Utah Array, proving it's possible to control prosthetics, send emails and texts, and decode speech just from thought. In 2008, lifelong friends Marcus Gerhardt and Florian Solzbacher saw the potential of the Utah Array to be used as a medical device to help millions of people worldwide with paralysis. They founded BlackRock Microsystems, which would later become BlackRock Neurotech, and acquired the intellectual property from CyberKinetics and others to make this possible. You know, we've grown out of the uh, neural engineering and neuroscience community. We've always seen ourselves as somebody who helps everybody to make progress in that field, learn with them, and then work with them towards getting towards the solutions that then help. We've been working on, as I said, a number of other electrodes and technologies. Most people uh, sort of refer to the Utah Electrode Array as a 100-channel device. That is one embodiment of it. Uh, very few people are aware of the fact that in most patient settings there are now multiple devices, so you're technically usually working with 400 channels or more. In non-human primates we've gone all the way to a thousand channels, even with that old architecture. So what we've done first is building that platform of technologies and making sure it's also not one electrode, but starting with the Utah Electrode Array, which is a family of electrodes now, then developing the electronics and miniaturizing them. These are massive team efforts, and I'm very, very grateful and lucky to be in that position that we've been able to attract more and more people to come towards this cause who are contributing their ideas and suggestions and have really made what we're able to do today for the people that need these solutions what it is. A big thank you goes out there to everybody who's making, who's making that possible. I think it's also important to understand that there are lots of other pieces to the system and lots of other things that matter when you're talking about how to report from the brain. Each one of those tips, if it's close to a neuron in the, in the cortex, can record the action potentials of that neuron. So you can think of the action potentials that we're pulling out as sort of the direct form of understanding what the brain is doing. In addition to the action potentials, you can look at different frequency bands within this local field potential to understand different aspects of how the brain is operating. And so, between the local field potentials and the action potential firing rates, you can record quite a lot of information from the cortex using neuroport electrode array. So right now we're looking at pretty much everything but the Utah array. This is everything on the opposite end that makes sure you actually can get 
information out of a BCI patient or BCI pioneer. To start with, we've got a head stage here, which is the Neuroplex E. This little rectangular box screws onto the Utah array pedestal and converts all of the signal that's getting picked up by the array itself into digital ones and zeros, and then sends it along this HDMI cable here to our digital hubs, and then the digital hubs convert the digital ones and zeros over to a fiber optic connection and send it to the big box at the bottom here, which is the neural signal processor, or NSP for short. The neural signal processor is where the rest of the magic happens. You can record brain signals all you want, but it doesn't do anything until you process it and pull the spikes out, which is what you're seeing visualized over here on the computer monitor. On the right, we have grid visualization of the array that's coming out of this simulator right here, and then in each of the sh like each of the channels from that array we're getting a bunch of spikes that are coming through and being processed by the NSP itself over here on the left i've zoomed in on one specific channel in order to demonstrate exactly how it pulls out the information and it thresholds using this red line here and then is capable of sorting out the spikes into different neural units by uh, using currently just brackets but we have a number of different spike sorting methods built into the software I've worked here at BlackRock Neurotech for one and a half years. I have a master's in chemical engineering from the University of Florida. I did a lot of work in uh, semiconductor uh, microfabrication techniques, and that is a bulk of what we use to fabricate our Utah arrays. So processes like uh, photolithography, wet etching, plasma etching, all these are uh, very important techniques that we use in uh, our Utah array fabrication. So I joined BlackRock about a year ago. My undergrad I did in neuropsychology and then my master's I did in neuroscience. And then I moved to um, University of Pittsburgh. That's where I met a BCI pioneer and got exposed to BlackRock for the first time because they were using the hardware. And that was so cool. Like the fact that Nathan was able to move prosthetics with his dogs. We have 32 BCI pioneers to date. We have over 30,000 patient days. The Neural Interface Utah Array with our system is what has shown efficacy across numerous applications already, and we're just opening that door. We are now on seven years, going on eight years, a BCI pioneer using this technology for eight years. When we started this, I remember distinctly 2008, meeting with researchers and they said, this is not going to work. Well, it's worked for eight years in human patients. It's worked for over 10 years in non-human primates. We've proven that this can work for that period of time. Just that network of neuroscience actors from researchers to participants and researchers you know, across the board, from the established PIs to your postdocs to her. That network, we've been in for over a decade. We've been servicing that network with tools to do foundational science all the way to translational science. And so, uh, and, and we're extremely grateful to that community. That community has made us strong. Their ideas, their input, their continued drive to push science forward. Our focus is on concrete applications with patient care in mind. The technology comes after. We then figure out what technology is best used and deploy to achieve that. Before her accident, Nancy loved to play the piano. As a result, researchers wanted to see if they could use a brain-computer interface to restore this ability. The videos you are looking at now show the training process that Nancy and the other pioneers went through to train with the system. Notice how she is controlling the cursor to move toward the highlighted circles just with her thoughts. Jan was an early pioneer of neuroprosthetic control. You can see that back in 2012, she already had expert control over the device, accurately grabbing objects of different sizes and moving them to different targets. When asked how she did it, she'd often say that she would just think where she wanted the robotic arm to go and her brain would do the rest. Jan was even able to use the arm to feed herself, opening a world of possibility for assistive use cases. One of my favorite moments in BCI history is when Jan fed herself a piece of chocolate but I'll let her tell that story. I accomplished a goal that I set before the surgery even took place. Um, they were asking if there was something special I wanted to do, like touch my children's cheek or 
hold my husband's hand and I said, my goal is to feed myself chocolate. And I did that today. I fed myself chocolate and then uh, string cheese and then a red pepper. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. There we go. That was a complete one. That was a big bite. Just a little taller. What a small nibble for a woman. One giant bite for DCI. Although the Utah Ray has been BlackRock's flagship device, the company is looking to the future. We got hands-on access to their next-generation neural interface, the Neuralace, which BlackRock announced in mid-November of 2022 at the Society for Neuroscience Conference. The implant is a flexible, hexagonal mesh that conforms to the surface of the brain. The first configuration of the device will have 10,000 electrodes, but the system is designed to scale to many, many more in the future. We were told that this design makes the Neuralace more biocompatible, scalable, and capable of collecting better data compared to previous neural interfaces. They expect that this interface will be available for researchers in 2024, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you again so much to BlackRock Neurotech and all of the amazing people here for flying us out and showing us a behind the scenes look into their cutting edge technology. It was really fun and a great learning experience for us and hopefully for you as well. If you like this type of video, please tell us in the comments and like and subscribe because we've got more coming. We'll see you in the next one.